Hello and welcome back. This video is going to demonstrate um, how to do the um, post installation tasks involved with DSpace. If you want to follow along and prepare yourself, you can go to this wiki. There's the, um, there's the address. You go to the wiki, uh, again click on this on the bottom right hand side, click on the R guide. And scroll down to select installation here. Click on that. Um, like we, in the previous procedures, we did those. We completed those three procedures. Uh, we installed DSpace, and so what we're going to do now is this um, critical, critical after installation tasks. Okay, um, I've created three sections of tasks to complete depending on priority. Um, in section one, these should be completed immediately. These should be completed as soon as possible. And these can be completed at a later stage. For each of these sections I'll try to do a video to explain what the tasks do. The first task immediately after installation is to what I call create a daily admin task. So we click on there. Um, just as I've mentioned here, just after installation is critically important that you enable daily automated tasks for your digital ar archive. In order to send out emails, update search, browse indexes, etc., uh, a regular maintenance script must be run automatically daily. On a Unix Linux based system, this is easy to do with a cron tab facility. Uh, if you want to find out what the cron tab facility is, um, please go to that link there, uh, read some more about that. Uh, I have some more links down here to explain what the cron tab does. Uh, here's a nice little um, online website to help you develop your own cron tabs. And then um, here's a reference of um, the DSpace community um, um, using a cron tab on the demo DSpace website. Uh, it's from there I got some uh, tips and tricks on how to build this um, daily admin cron tab. Okay, the requirements uh, of course you need to have that source folder uh, and you have need to have installed according to uh, the procedures in this wiki. Installed DSpace according to the procedures in this wiki. Okay, so we are I've got my, uh, if you see on the right hand side here, I um, started up my um, VirtualBox machine server and just to prove to you it's running, there it is, it's running uh, as you can see, it's running so we have a working uh, VirtualBox running so what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize that and that will be the same as um, um, parking or getting out of the server room so this 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 um, instance here is a, simulates a server running in a server room, and I'm going to minimize it to put it out of the way. I just want to make you know that I have a server up and running that we're going to connect to. All right, with um, Ubuntu, it's very easy to connect. You open up a terminal, you type Control Alt T, uh, or you type here in the and you search, you type term and to find it and you click on there to click on terminal okay let we type control rt now we're going to log in we type we want to use the ssh protocol and we're going to log in as a dspace user to the machine 192.168.2.7 that was the host name in theory uh, remember the host name is use a proper host name but this is a virtual machine so we log in and by connecting to its ip address so we press enter this so we're going to yes we're going to Accept the certificate and then we log in with the pass at 09 Ubuntu 09. And there you go, we logged in and there's the source code. So, how do we do the this after admin for DSpace 5? So we click on that link there. Obviously, step one we've done, we've logged in. All right. Um, you must make sure that you are the DSpace user. So we 
just to make sure uh, if people are confused that's why I put that command in there there we are and use this type uh, 09 Ubuntu 09 just to make sure that we are logged in they're yeah, very important we are logged in as the DSpace user and then there we got control tab E um, and copy and paste that in oops wrong copy and paste so let's select that again copy and paste that in there if you've done the installation you're familiar with the copy and paste okay I've already done this before I've done the uh, editing there and as you can see uh, it says there's sample cron tab for a production D space okay so here I've got it sample cron tab here on the wiki uh, for you to copy and paste I did the copy and paste already and I pasted it into that file and um, I suggest you go through um, your settings here and modify um, as you'd like um, but this is very definitely required for after installation Okay, once you've had a look there and you've modified and uh, customized it for your system type control O of course to write it out and then control X to get out if you want to see a listing of it you just type that command contact as L there is the listing and if you want to save it it's a good idea from the listing then to pipe it say to a cron tab txt file like that and then we're going to pipe it out the, whatever output comes from that command will be piped out into that text file so we hit enter there and now if we uh, do a listing we see, see that we have a cron tab text file and if we cat it to see the content of it we'll see that it has the content of our, our, our um, daily class so you can use that text file and, and uh, copy it and attach it to an email etc and so forth and uh, to use it for collaboration on, on these um, tasks after admin tasks right the next thing is you would like to know when these cron files or automatic tasks run and you'd like to have the local Ubuntu system to be able to um, log them when the cron tabs run so if, the, if something if a task doesn't run at least you have a log to be able to troubleshoot so to enable uh, the system to log cron tabs you just copy and paste that uh, put in the password 09 Ubuntu 09 and then you go down here and there will be a hash sign in front of here on the system you just remove the hash sign like that and control O and control X and now um, the cron logs will be um, the cron logs will be um, logged there in that file var log cron log perhaps we have one already so if we can go var log if we have a look at a listing uh, we don't have there oh there we are there we have a cron log see there so it's logging the cron logs let's have a look what's in there if we cat that cron log you can see there it's um, running the cron tabs or the dspace user there oh sorry there's my editing um, let's nano that file and so we can have a look uh, there you can log in that, that I created the, the beginning of the edit and so forth yeah. so there you have a log as the logs go through as the sorry as the tasks happen it will they'll be um, registered on the um, in the R syslog what we call the syslog can be registered by the syslog server and then just to enable that it's a good idea to restart that service to make sure it's enabled and there you go CD to get back to where we start okay and there's some um, help links for dspace5 on how to use the command line um, you know to toss schedule via cron etc and again there's the uh, the demo script uh, from the demo dspace website okay so that concludes the um,
the major the, the very important to daily admin task some other after installation tasks is to create a rebuild tspace script uh, if we go in there it's to, uh, as I said here in the introduction if you apply customization tspace needs to be rebuilt um, so you don't always want to uh, and there's um, introduction to customization and more about customization in that link you don't want to keep typing um, commands to um, Re uh, to rebuild DSpace after customizations, uh, there's a lot of commands to type, and you may forget it and type things wrong. So what I've done for versions of DSpace, um, I've given you uh, example scripts that I've developed uh, out of these general references, uh, and I've tested them regularly on my system. So to do a rebuild DSpace script for uh, versions of DSpace five. Um, we just follow uh, this um, procedure here. Okay, so the first step, obviously, we've logged into the server. And then we want to make a. Um, we're going to run this script as the DSpace user. So we're going to create a script folder there. Here's the DSpace user. So we copy and paste that in there. Boom. And it says the file already exists. So I've already done this before. I've created the scripts folder. But you won't get that error when you do that if you haven't got a scripts folder. So it's got a scripts folder. And here, to create the build web app script or the rebuild web app script, you copy and paste that and you paste that in there and you press enter. Okay, then uh, you should have, if you in a new system, this will be clean, there'll be nothing in here. This will be all there, this will all be empty. Um, what I've done previously is I copied, carefully selected all of this and use the arrow keys to go down and try um, yeah, using the arrow keys and a combination of that and selecting that, the right clicking and then pasting it in here and so I've created that in there so I've already created that script so what does the script just briefly, uh, what does the script do? Um, it cleans up old cache file, cache and log files uh, it removes the old web apps to make sure you don't have old web apps lying around when you off the rebuild. Um, cleans out old config files. I've made it clean out old config files. These these will be all commented out, uh, and I suggest you, as you see there, it's commented out, and I suggest you review this script and um, customize it to do what you would like to do. Okay, so when the script runs, uh, it will stop Tomcat. It'll do all these tasks. It will build. Yeah, this is the critical task here. Yeah. It will do the Maven build, uh, and then it do an end update. Uh, and uh, uh, I do just fix some file permissions there. And here, yeah, Tomcat is restarted, and your system. As you can see, there's a lot of commands to type uh, after a rebuild. So it's very handy to have this script to, 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 do, to, um, uh, to do all this for you. I uh, strongly recommend this script. Okay, so when you're finished with that, you type Ctrl X and write it out. Um, and then just some review of the nano editor help for those unfamiliar. Then you must make the script executable um, by typing, copying and typing in that command. And then you run the script after a customization. I'm not going to do that now because it be uh, take quite a while to rebuild and um, it will take a long time with this video but you're welcome to run that script and test it. Okay, and you'll see it re it will build the web app. So go ahead, do customization after customization just to make sure everything's good, build the web apps again. And it's a good idea after rebuild just to check that your config files have been copied over correctly from all the customizations. I've been copied over correctly and now there. Okay. What other task is there after installation? Restart. We want to restart this space. But this restart is slightly different from the rebuild. The restart is not a rebuild, this is a restart. Um, it does most of the same things as the rebuild except the building of the application. 
and this uh, restart is very handy um, if you've made a small DSpace configuration change um, if you've done a small uh, customization uh, that doesn't require a rebuild uh, after a system failure to restart everything and get everything up and running properly again and also to run at a predetermined time using that cron tab as we did with all daily admin um, which I used to do with um, my DSpace 4 um, I used to uh, restart DSpace at quarter to 8 every morning to make sure it was ready for everybody who came in uh, in the morning so and we've based our server on Ubuntu 14.04 so we select this for our um, restart DSpace script uh, we're going to restart DSpace as the uh, as I said there if you've logged in this as you must log in as the user and then become the root user uh, so we're going to run a script for as the root user so we become the root user we copy and paste that in there and uh, now you see that I am have now become the root user in that system and again we make a scripts folder as a root user best practice is to create a scripts folder so there we go and okay previously I did it I've already got a scripts folder alright so now we create this restart dspace script by typing that command you know, and paste that in there and you see I've done that already I copied and pasted this uh, into here into there and I did the normal control uh, and control X so this is if you look at this this almost looks like the rebuild script but the only part I've removed all the parts about rebuilding and the ant rebuild so this gives you a clean uh, DSpace uh, and Tomcat to work with and a, and a nice fresh DSpace uh, ready for people in the morning when they arrive. So uh, yeah. Alright so there's some, uh, let me save that and control X to get out. Um, again there's some nano editor help. Then the last part is to make the script executable and then to use the script to restart the dspace okay uh, handy tip uh, you can watch what happens as after the restart uh, to see what happens with the restart is to tell the catalina uh, um, log file while the restart is happening because on a on a system with very few resources it'll take a while to restart so it's a good idea to um, watch the restart as it's happening is just to by um, viewing the output of that file and then as the root user we want to um, if you want to make sure this uh, your dspace restarts at a regular time is you just copy and paste that in there press enter cron tab uh, and go down here at the bottom and there you see I've done it before uh, for you. I copied and pasted that that part there and pasted it in there so you see that at 7.45 in the morning uh, the root scripts restarts script is executed so my um, DSpace system every day was um, nice and ready. I haven't, with our new server and with DSpace 5.5, I'm not using the script. But I used to use this script um, with all my DSpaces before DSpace 5. So control X to get out there. Um, and to see what else is there. Okay. So we got the restart. So what other task is there uh, besides the restart? Okay, there's the rebuild. You may uh, rebuild indexes. You may create some custom indexes, um, but after any index, you need to rebuild uh, indexes, uh, not the web apps. Uh, you might need to build the web apps, but most definitely after any index modification, uh, you will need to rebuild them. Uh, and again, there's the references or where I found all the um, content for this. So now we're using DSpace 5. So we're going to go to click on DSpace 5. Again, uh, if you're coming in new, uh, some information and logging in. Again, now we must make sure we are the, this must be run as the DSpace user. So to become a DSpace user, I'm just going to exit. And there you can see I'm a DSpace user. If you have logged in or some other user, you must type that to become a DSpace user. You type that to create the scripts folder, which we've already done with other procedures. So we have the scripts folder. We type this to create the indexes file. So let's do that. Copy and type and okay, paste that in, create the indexes file. And you can see I've already done that. 
Alright. And here you'll have to select which index you want to do uh, after modifying indexes. As far as I understand from the documentation, um, this command here will re-index or what I call rebuild the index, uh, wiping out the current one. So this is a complete rebuild. Um, this one here uh, is basically recreate or update an index if you have an existing index, this command here. Yeah. These are mutually exclusive, um, so you will have to select what you want to do after um, an index modification. This is the one yeah, that rebuilds everything, and this is the one that just updates with the new information. So you will have to choose what you want to do. And then I have some information here about uh, DSpace versions 4.2 and below, and how to um, how to build new indexes for those systems. Okay, but this is DSpace 5, then you'll have to just select which one of these you want to enable. Right, Control X to get out of there. And so what I did there, uh, as again, is I copied and pasted this into that script folder. Again, some more nano help. And then after the after you've done that is to make the script executable. You must do that. And then here, yeah, whenever you need it, you run that scripts uh, that scripts uh, build index a script whenever you want. And you run that, sorry, you use this command to just see if there's anything else to do here. Uh, there's nothing. Anything back to after installation tasks? Nothing. Okay, for this I will do another video. Uh, I just want to demonstrate something. If you go into the scripts folder, there's all of the two scripts we created, and and they are green, which means they are executable. Uh, there you can see they are with the X's there. That means they are executable there. The X's there mean they're executable. So to run the scripts from here, it's very handy. You must type the dot forward slash. In the Unix Linux world, means type execute from this place that means execute from this directory this command so you can say build web apps and execute it press enter to execute it or build indexes and press enter to execute it just remember that dot forward slash or you could type the full path to execute it um, that's what's it let's use the home variable and it's in the scripts folder there and there we go. That's the full path. You could type the full path to uh, execute. So I suggest become familiar with these the various ways of starting and stopping, uh, starting, starting scripts and modifying scripts. Very powerful and very handy um, utility that comes with uh, Linux Unix systems. Okay, so that concludes uh, section one of uh, the after the post installation task. This one. I will create another video for the next section. Thank you very much and goodbye.